so we slept really late and I was running late. I don't know how that always happens. I pride myself on being early to everything. And I feel like when you know that you could have more time, you run late, I don't know. So I was kind of hurrying and rushing to get ready, but we're about to leave to go eat at Gray Lady. And so I'll try to film there and kind of see what it's like. But um, we just took it easy this morning. And like I said earlier, I think I said this earlier, like it's kind of hard for me to feel like I'm not maxing something out and like waking up early and like going out into the city. But it's been really nice just to relax. So no regrets, no regrets. So we're going to go eat and I will check in there. Okay, here's the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We made a stop here, actually, because our Uber driver was so bad that we just needed to get the heck out of the car. <laughs> so I'm trying to recover so I don't get sick. But it's really neat to see it. We're headed kind of into Central Park, so thank you before dinner. So we'll turn around and show that we were here. Here we are in front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Are you feeling up here? Oh, yeah. And then we tried to find where we could review a driver just for being a bad driver, and we can't. Like, there's no place to actually just say, like, they were a bad driver. So, anyway, that's exciting. But it's cool to be, I mean, it's cool to get it in context, you know, like see where it is. Woo! As they say in London, it's a bit blowy. Okay. Guys, that was, that was rough. Okay, so we're going to go to the Central Park, hopefully show you a few things. And go to dinner. Look at this dog. Look at this dog. Look at that dog, y'all. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is like a movie star dog on a commercial right now. Hi, doggy. <laughs> it's so cute. Weirdest looking thing I've ever seen, but really, really cute. Yay. We'll check in later. So here we are in Central Park. And of course, there's so many areas of Central Park. I think this is called, what, Turtle Pond? Yes. And then up here is Belvedere Castle. You can kind of see the skyline through there, hard to see. This is a nice time to come. It's right kind of before sunset and it's quiet. And peaceful. I've actually never really walked through Central Park. I've been in New York, New York several times, but it's actually never been something that I've done. So it's nice. I guess this is Belvedere Castle. Up here, you're not sure what exactly it is. Sure. Up in there. We'll see. Okay. Look at this view. And we just came up down these little steps. And now we're on this super cute little bridge. It's just so cool. Look at the little ducks. That's so pretty. I if I can get myself in there. Chris, I should get myself in the shot. Here I am. <laughs> and with this new cool. Because you want to see the show. So you'll know. Yeah. You'll, you'll, yep. 
tell them why we're here. Why are we here? Because we had a busy, busy, and then we're just taking them Oh, yeah. No, we're talking about how, like, uh, when you're in a big city, there's a tension about how much you should be seeing and doing and visiting, and um, there's just a major temptation to go, 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 go. Especially for me, because I want to max out everything, and it's hard. Um, so it's been neat to take this minute. Um, on a kind of a whim, I was like, we got done at the Tenement Museum early, and I told Kurt, why don't we just like go ahead and change for dinner, and we'll walk through Central Park on our way to dinner. And, um, and it ended up being, I think it's gonna probably be one of our best memories is walking through Central Park, because it was so quiet and pretty, and it's a really good moment in the middle of all that. <laughs> Um, that you're tempted to see. So how did you put, you said it's just like a tension, right? Like it's a... You, you never you never want to be so focused on going and doing that you forget to just stop and take in the more subtle things, really, that yeah. have just as much significance. So we're trying, that's been like a topic of conversation for us is um, navigating that on a trip and in travel and slowing down in life, really, I mean, honestly slowing down and the balance between busy and just being quiet and so it's been it's been really good so anyway i had to show you guys that's why you take a minute and you just walk through central park and there's a lot going on out there you know what i mean there's a lot to be offered a lot of shows a lot of restaurants a lot of activities but i just think stuff like this is priceless. So that's what we're doing. More views of Central Park. We're gonna walk across the bridge. Okay, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but up there, that lit building is Haver on the Green. That is our dinner location. We are so excited about it. It's been wonderful walking around. This has been really nice. So there's Haver on the Green. Eat some yummy, yummy food. Yay! Okay, I have to show you guys. Here we are at Tavern on the Green. We just finished our dinner. We're in kind of the back dining room, and it's like pretty much all glass. And there's the kitchen over there. But out on the courtyard, there's like a Christmas tree, there's like a big courtyard where people um, have been taking pictures and gathering, and there's like another section of the restaurant over there. So it had closed for a while, and now and it's reopened. And I'm so glad. It's just beautiful. I'm going to show you all like the front area because that has more of like a true tavern lodge kind of feel. But it's just beautiful. Yep. It's a great dinner and I'll show y'all kind of the other part of the restaurant on our way out. It's gorgeous. Okay, so here is the kind of main entrance. Look at that fireplace in the tree. And then this is kind of the bar area. And that's the front door to the restaurant. It's just gorgeous. I just want to show you this. This is the line of ticket holders to get into the show of Hamilton. It's crazy. Like all the way down the block. All the way down the block. Crazy. 
So we are now in the back of the line. So you can see how far. So excited. <laughs> Okay, I'm sneaking a shot. This is the Hamilton stage. Oh my gosh! It's amazing, isn't it? Full house. The energy is incredible. Everyone loves this show. So we're at intermission. It's amazing! I'll check in later. Hey guys, we're back in our hotel room. I was here for, we've been here for a good while and I finally remembered to actually film to cap off the evening. Um, it was an incredible, incredible night. And um, when we saw Hamilton, you know, we were, I think I mentioned this before, Kurt and I, more me, but Kurt too, were familiar with the soundtrack of Hamilton. And so it's much like Les Mis in that there's not dialogue really. It's just those songs and there's a lot of songs. And so if you've heard the soundtrack, you pretty much know, you know, you're not missing kind of the holes with dialogue, if that makes sense. Um, so it was really cool though to see, you know, the choreography, how they staged it, hearing that sung live. Um, everyone did just such an incredible job. And I posted um, on my social media stuff when I was listening to the song Quiet Uptown, and that's what it's called, Quiet Uptown. And it's the song that they sing about Hamilton and his wife after their son has died. And it's really poignant, and I'd always thought it was beautiful and really special and touching, but it didn't really affect me until tonight. And, you know, the premise of the song is, you know, if you see someone on the street, you know, walking, just walking around right next to you, have pity on them because they could be going through the unimaginable. And the song continues to talk about even like a husband, even Eliza and Alexander. Like if you see that, you know, there's a couple in the city and taking in the sides of the city, but but they're going through the they're working through the unimaginable and those specific lyrics just got me because that really describes me and Kurt right now just be, excuse me just because um, we have just gone through a miscarriage in the last couple of weeks and you know we're posting all these happy pictures you know on social media and and those are genuine you know we're genuinely enjoying ourselves and really having an amazing time and making memories that will you know, remember forever. But at the same time, we're working through the unimaginable in a lot of ways, and we're still processing kind of what happened. And so um, it's been really special to be here together under those circumstances, because on one hand, it's weird, you know, to be having such a, you know, fun and awesome trip on the heels of frankly a tragedy in our lives and um but it's been really good just to be together and to have this time to kind of process with the other person and have uninterrupted conversation and just share meals together and you know it's Kurt and I talk a lot about tension in life there's kind of just this tug of war and tension in most situations and it's a balance and that's what we felt on this trip you know it's a balance between you know i guess not moving on you know you know what i mean by that you know you're not moving on from what happened and forgetting but taking those next step steps forward i guess is the best way to describe it for me and you know, there's still moments where it just really gets me and there always will be moments like that. And so I'm, I'm learning to live with that and knowing that there's just always going to be a, a part of me that belongs to my child and that will always grieve that loss. And so at the same time, it's still possible for, you know, Kurt and I to enjoy a trip together and, and laugh and be happy and all that to say it's you know we've just had like full hearts the whole time I guess is a good way to put it in a lot of ways and so capping it off with this show 
was really inspiring. You know, you walk away from Hamilton and you're just like, these were the guys, this was the you know, one of the men that completely changed the trajectory of our country. And that's huge. And looking, you know, examining them, you know, in their private lives even, you know, how did they handle family life and responsibility and where did they miss the mark? And, you know, ultimately we're not the judge of that because we weren't actually there. We're not that person. And, but I think, you know, another takeaway from Hamilton is that you have to look at people comprehensively and, you know, Aaron Burr, if you're familiar with, with the story at all, Aaron Burr, um, you know, is frankly painted as a villain throughout history because he's the one that shot Alexander Hamilton. At the very end, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda, who wrote this, Kurt was like, you know, he even made you sympathetic towards Aaron Burr, you know, at the very end. And, but it's true. It's like, you, you have to, you, it teaches you to look at people comprehensively and just, you know, from different perspectives and you get in trouble, um, you know, obviously there's things that, that I believe that you should take a hard stand on that, you know, you don't compromise on. Um, but there are a lot of things where it gets you in trouble to, to be extremist and to take, you know, these hard stances on things and opinions of people are one of those things. And so it's just deep stuff, you know, that you take away from this show and you're inspired to be a better person. You really are. And, and you're inspired to learn more and be more and do more. And so Kurt and I've had really good conversations this weekend, even leading up to seeing this musical. We've just had good conversations ab about that and what that means in our lives and what that could potentially look like for us. And so it's been a really good trip and I, you know, I always feel like my vlogging is probably disjointed, but hopefully you've gotten kind of a sense of what we were doing and seeing. And so even amidst the circumstances of when this was timed, you know, God knew that we needed this trip and, and it took on a whole different meaning for us than it would have otherwise. So we're thankful. And so we're going to go back home tomorrow and we said, you know, we were saying resume life, you know, and responsibilities, but I think that we'll have a, a good energy going back and being with our kids, you know, Kurt said, you know, Alexander and Eliza would have given anything at the end, they would have given anything to have the family life back, you know, cause they lost their son, they, you know, they, you know, he passed away, you know, to lots of tragedy. And so like they would have given anything to have that back. And so Kurt put it well. And he, he said, you know, we can go and enjoy each other's company and travel and do all these like cool things, but still go, you know, still go back and spend the bulk of our lives, you know, with, you know, as a family unit and, love on our kids and so we feel really thankful for that and so we're gonna go home tomorrow and hug our kids and i think have a really good perspective going forward so hopefully you've enjoyed this and i'm grateful to share it with you bye guys